Training camp had arrived. The locale? The most unique of places. Europe. Rome and London, to be exact. I didn't want to go. I, did, I, did, I thought, well, why this year? Come on. And then once we got there and the phones didn't work, I remember telling our coach, this is great. They have to talk to each other. All you heard was chatter. Everyone opened up a little bit about themselves and getting to know one another in a foreign country because obviously we didn't speak the language. So we had to talk to each other a little bit more and communicate. And I think that built the trust, the bond that we needed to start the season off right. The first practice, there was almost a fight. In the very first practice, Eddie House and James Posey decided they're not going to take any crap from Paul, Ray, and Kevin. It just sparked off practice like you never want to see before. I felt like this was like a playoff atmosphere. Me and KG, we just got into it. And it was just one of those things where, you know, you just talk too much. We literally kicked their ass. It was great. Now, I'm sitting there, Tibbs looks at me, and I just kind of let them go at it. It was a fight. Like, we're going to fight. Like, what's up? It was fun. It was fun. I'm a competitive guy. I come from Oakland, man. We don't know no other way. It was just like, you know, like, we're going to get this respect thing, you know, from the start. We're going to be here together, so we got to make this thing work. It happened. It's over with. Let's move on. We got that out of our system. Let's get back on track. This is a competitive group we got right here, and I think that's what made us a great team. It was great luck for them to have a training camp in Rome and London because it kind of just took them away from Boston, it took them away from their families, and just forced them to be together for, like, two weeks, and quickly made them a family. It was Paul and KG and then there was Ray. And Ray was a little different. Ray beat by his own drum. Ray always spoke his own mind. Even though this team was coming together, I could see back then that Ray was just a little different than everybody else. Hey, look here, man. I'm you're, old, a you're older. Look, you ready to go at it right now? Look, no, man. I just asked a question. Man, I just, want you, explain, years, I just want you to explain how listen, man, I your listen, head man. is more bald than every mine time, right now. Every time I say something to you, man. Ray used to have this routine, right, where he used to dribble the ball like crazy in the locker room. Well, KG mindset was like everybody needed to get into their own zone, so it needed to be quiet. So I just remember him and Ray just yelling back and forth like, Hey, hey, chill out with all that, that bouncing of the ball, man. We got to get locked in. We got young fellas in here. You got to get locked in. So, like, everything he did, like, he set the tone from the jump. Despite subtle personality clashes at the top of the roster, one thing became clear. Everything funneled through Kevin Garnett. The team's identity centered around him. If we had to say who was the man of that team, it had to be KG. His intensity, the way he demanded perfection from everyone was... Ridiculous. When he was there, everyone was at their best, whether it be a ball boy, whether it be the equipment manager, everyone was on edge to be their best because that's what he demanded from you. And you see the best of the best of the best doing it. You know, you don't want to let them down and you want to stay on top of your craft. And if you couldn't handle that environment, you couldn't be on the team. I thought that Rome trip that week and then going to London, I thought it was it was huge for us to get out to a great start. Umbuntu, we do everything together. Uh, we all got to go. Umbuntu, Umbuntu, Umbuntu. Season two, all the right here. Excited for this year. That was a tough ticket. <laughs> Good luck getting in there that night. Everybody was alive. Everybody was woke. The season had finally arrived, and with it, motivation in the form of a blog post from Washington's Gilbert Arenas. The All-Star guard guaranteed the new Big Three's first game would end in a loss. Doc actually posted the article outside the locker room door so everybody had a glance at it, and then Doc brought it up in his pregame speech. Doc is probably the best motivational speaker to get guys going before the game I've ever been around. Nonetheless, the game one, we didn't need it. When I put that jersey on, I, I'm fully understanding the, the, the significance, the privilege, um, the guys that come before me. I don't discount that. You know, I don't take that lightly. Everybody just wanted to go out there and just show that we was ready from the jump. We didn't need time to jail. We was ready to go get after it, and we did. And I remember them showing the, uh, the KG scream. Ah! on the screen, and then everybody's all fired up. Now he's fired up. I mean, this is what he, this is what he lives on. <laughs> Turns out, Arenas was wrong, very wrong. The Celtics crushed the Wizards, 103 to 83. Garnett finished with 22 points, 
20 rebounds, five assists, three blocks, and three steals. We have not seen a long time a Celtics blowout. As the game wound down, KG's focus turned upward to the Jumbotron. You gotta remember, they weren't winning before. So how often were they gonna play Gino? I didn't even know this thing was going on until um, I was doing an interview and someone asked me about Gino. And I had no idea what they were talking about. Kevin was the first one that like kind of started dancing to it. KG was just blown away by Gino. <laughs> the joke never got old for KG. When Kevin saw it, he took it to the next level. He looked up and he saw, you know, Gino doing his little dance moves, and then he wanted to do his little dance moves, and then everybody kind of like joined in on it. Like, you know, he getting everybody, check out, look at Gino. Look, oh, look at the guy on the side dancing. We did enjoy it. We enjoyed it because we, we got to see him so much, you know, and uh, we were looking forward to Gino in the fourth quarters, and that's when you knew we had the game under control. And so it was great. It was like a, the modern day victory cigar. You know, bring out Gino and you know you got a, you had a good night, you had an easy win at home. Two days later, the Celtics squared off against the Raptors in Toronto. At the team's morning meeting, Doc Rivers revealed some bad news. His father, Grady, had passed away. Tom Thibodeau stepped in and coached the team while Boston's brand new shooting guard delivered a memorable result. It was somewhat unexpected and you know, Doc was, when you see, see him hurting like that, you feel for him. You know, you're trying to help him, and there's nothing you can really do to help him other than, you know, to carry on like, you know, he was there. Looking, looking, gets it in. Ray Allen for the game, knocks it down! 2.6! Quickly, into Parker. Parker from half court for the tie. Boston in overtime beats Toronto and Ray buries a three from the corner. This conference has gotten a lot of better over the summertime, and I think everybody's ready to play this year. Uh, the Eastern Conference has gotten a lot better, so we got to bring it every night. Ray hitting that shot was huge for us, and Toronto was a very good team. It's a tough place to play. I think it meant something for them to, to win one for a doc, you know, knowing the pain that he was going through. The Celtics' second game of the season also gave James Posey his first chance to introduce his teammates to an important pregame ritual the posy hug those long soulful hugs he'd give guys before and he'd whisper something in their ear i'd say okay james let go now and he'd still be talking all right james let go and he'd still be talking and then here's the next guy and there's another long soulful hug but the guys look forward to it he was more so the guy that held everybody accountable and we couldn't fight it because he actually won the ring so we was trying to get to what he already had little reminders like i say Every night was something different, but just how important those guys were to me and to our team. Hey, Perk, tonight, man, you got to come out here. I need 12 rebounds. I need three block shots. I need you to set all your screens right. He would always call me young fella, tell me to lead, and go out there and do what I do best. He was trying to win another championship, so you couldn't do nothing but buy into what he was saying. The new-look Celtics were on full display for all to see. So, too, was Garnett's ferocious mentality. I know the lightning bolts that I possess, man. I try to, I just try to keep them all in, in sync, not hold them in, but keep it all centered. Kevin's crazy. Yeah, you know, I, I love him. He'll go throughout the whole day just laughing, joking. And then all of a sudden, like, by the time you got to the arena, it was like serious business. He'd be already in a full sweat right before the game. He was like a walking red bull. It was almost like he became like this gladiator. Some of the most amazing antics before the game would start. Go down and he bang his head and then he had this powder going. He cursed like a sailor. He probably had one of the filthiest mouths in sports history. Right at jump ball, he had his section of the stands that he used to go to and, like, pound his chest. He used to give me chills. We can be up 40, and I'm like, come on, man, y'all got to get on the floor. And, and that's how I think. And the clock is still running. It's 48 minutes in the game, and you have to play it all out. If he want to get a stop, he may roll on the ground, like, and clap his hands. Like, all that stuff, we fed off of him. Kevin was a guy to 
motivated you. He really made me feel bad that I didn't do well in the game or I let my team down. Kevin is a culture changer. His actions said everything. If you didn't listen to anything, just watching what he did, it was all team. Everything screamed team. It was never about Kevin. That selfless way of thinking manifested itself in a vital part of Boston's game, defense. The Celtics would go on to become one of the best defensive teams of all time, in large part due to Garnett and Thibodeau. Defense is a mindset and effort. I'm athletic, you know, as long as we're communicating, talking, and my thing is rebounding and second shots. Kevin Garnett is the poster child of buying in, of cooperation, of getting guys to buy in with you and bringing guys along. When you have your leader setting the tone, setting the bar high, you have to try to get up there. You know, no matter what, you, I'm never gonna be on his level. We know that. But I gotta get as close as I can. I'm gonna bring mine every day. He demanded everybody to play defense. And it was just like, you know, when the big fella demanded it, you know, guys followed it. Tom Thibodeau took about two, three hours doing shoot around. He uh, a trillion hours on tape, actions, tendencies, numbers, strategies, who can shoot, who can't shoot. That guy right there was the wizard of that. Kevin was kind of like the guy that just made sure whatever the wizard said happened. Those are the guys why that defense was so good. Our discipline was by far the best I've ever had in my career. We were some pit bulls out there. Like, we wasn't, we wasn't scared. And that right there set the tone. If we only gonna score 80 points, you only gonna have 75. <laughs> so we gonna win. And that was our mentality. Boston finished November with wins in 13 of 15 games. That included an easy victory over the hated Lakers the day after Thanksgiving and another buzzer beater from Ray Allen. Ray Allen for the game! Got it! At the buzzer! <laughs> Riding a nine-game win streak, the Celtics stood at 20-2 and two, six days before Christmas. Staring them down on the schedule was the class of the Eastern Conference. Detroit. I think the Pistons were trying to hold on. They had a reign for about eight years. Now you got this new power team that came in and everybody's falling in love with. So I'm, I'm sure they wanted to come in and make a statement that we're not ready to give this up just yet. The Pistons took a six point lead in the fourth quarter before consecutive three pointers by Eddie House and Ray Allen tied the game at 85 apiece. Ray Allen with nine on the clock gets a look. Got it! With time running out, veteran point guard Chauncey Billups got just what he was looking for. Fouls with one tenth of a second on the clock. Billups hit both free throws. Detroit won the game by two, hitting Boston its first home loss. It's not like someone died yesterday. We lost the game. You know what I mean? We, we were not going to overreact to one loss. If we lose five in a row, then we're going to start overreacting. The Celtics left for the West Coast on Christmas Day. Four games and five nights awaited them. Road trips were always the ideal time to partake in one of the team's favorite pastimes, competition.